Sermon title, Marriage, Part 1. Subtopic, The Bride of Jesus Christ, by Pastor Kevin Quailchild Rodriguez. All right, let us pray for today's word <clears throat> that he has laid into my heart here today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for gathering us here today. Um, a dear friend uh, reminded me just this morning that when we gather in multiples, you are here to bless us. You are in the midst here today. Holy Spirit, we ask you to just fill this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, we ask you to take full control over this message here today, that as we talk about marriage from a spiritual aspect, that Lord, you would bless our heart with the living words of God here today. Father, we pray that you uh, anoint our heart, till our heart, that our heart would be uh, tilled with soft soil, oh God, fertilized soil, that as the words of God are deposited, the, the seeds of life into our heart, they would take deep root and bear much fruit. Lord, we thank you here today for your word. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you take full control. Anoint these lips of clay. Nothing that manifests here today do we glory in the flesh. But, Father, we deflect all our praise, all the honor, all the glory goes to you in spirit. Here today, Lord, we thank you. Holy Spirit, take full control. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. amen. I'm going to go ahead and take my glasses off now so as I get into the reading of the word, I don't blind you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. If I could have you, church, stand with me. We're going to go into the reading of God's word. So prepare our heart for today's message along with the prayer we just had. Amen. We're going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Book of Revelation, chapter 21. We're going to read from verses 9 through 27. You guys, his legs feel strong right now? Amen. Amen. It's going to be a little bit of a read, but I ask you to continue to stand with me. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and the word of the Lord reads, One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride. Everybody look to your neighbor and say, The bride. The wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me a holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates and its walls. The city was laid out like a square. As long as it was wide, he measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as wide and high as it is long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement and it was 144 cubits thick. The wall was made of jasper, the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city's wall were uh, decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, and the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl. <clears throat> The ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate of a single pearl. Imagine that. The great street of the city was gold, as pure as transparent glass. Did not see a temple, and I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty. And the Lamb are its temple. Hallelujah. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives it light. And the Lamb is its
its lamp. Verse 24. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut for there will be no night there. 26. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going one day to a, a new heaven, a new uh, Jerusalem, not made with human hands, but will be the uh, temple of God, that one day we will be there. Amen. Amen. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Today's uh, sermon title is Marriage Part 1. Marriage Part 1, we're going to be talking about the spiritual aspect of marriage. And the bride of Christ is the subtopic. Marriage Part 1. So today we're starting a two-part series. This week we'll talk about the spiritual aspect, next week we'll talk about the physical aspect. Amen. Amen. See, I believe what God is doing in this season, as he had downloaded many uh, messages and topics to bring forth, and, and what he is doing is he's really focusing on bringing alignment, right? Alignment meaning, <laughs> look at Trevor smiling, alignment meaning bringing everything in a perfect understanding and, and alignment where things support one another in proper order. Amen. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about marriage, I want us to understand marriage as something that is permanently bonded together. Amen. Something permanently bonded together. <laughs> Trevor is smiling. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when I think of something that is permanently bonded together, many of you know that I work in the aerospace industry, right? So uh, my background for most of my, I don't know, 27, 28 years of manufacturing has been in sheet metal manufacturing. So when we manufacture something out of sheet metal for airplanes, right, they've got to be inspected to the highest standards, right? You've got to use the most pure uh, steels and materials because airplanes and engine parts, they get really hot, right? So you just can't use any type of material. But one of the bonding methods that we use in sheet metal manufacturing is a, 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 a term called welding, right? Welding. You've heard of welding. You see people on the streets even sometimes with the hats on and they're, they got the arc, you know, you see this bright light and they're welding something, you know, maybe it's a gate, maybe it's something that's at a, a, a I don't know, a construction site sometimes, right? Well, in, in our manufacturing, we weld a lot of sheet metal materials together. And when you weld something, you're taking two separate pieces, at minimum, right? You're bringing them together and you're fusing them together. Both pieces of the material being bonded go to a complete molten state and they intermix, right? And it's, it's a, 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 a permanent bond, metallurgically, it's a permanent bond of two pieces of material that are together. This process called welding. Marriage, I want us to think of it spiritually in this way as well. As marriage, right, spiritually represents Jesus Christ as the head of the church. Jesus Christ as our spiritual husband. Amen. We read here that the bride, right, the bride was shown brightly to Jesus, the husband of the church. So here today, when I tell you the bride of Christ is the church of Christ. Amen. Because Jesus is the head of the church. Amen. Amen. 
So today, I, when I talk about marriage, it's within this, uh, this alignment construct. Next week, we talk about the physical aspect of, of marriage, right? Holy matrimony, man and woman coming together under God's lordship and him ordaining that marriage. Amen. But what this is, is a divine unity. But this week, we talk about the spiritual aspect of marriage here. It's good to know that Jesus Christ wants to be the head of our households. He wants to be the head of the church. He wants to be Lord over all. We have a lot of families out in the world right now. And my family once was uh, rocked with disorder. Once really ravished by the enemy that, that, that took love and brought chaos in the mix. Even after having children, right? How many people are just having children and daddy's not in the scene? Or maybe mom's not in the scene. But how many times where mom and dad are not in the scene of these little precious jewels that we bring into the world, right? So I believe that as God is bringing messages this month about love and unity and alignment and community, he's doing it so that we get our attention to be able to have the opportunity to set our lives up in proper order. When we are in proper order and God is Lord over all, everything is blessed underneath that. No matter of hell, no matter how high the water gets, no matter if you're looking at death in the face, you will know that God is with you. With you. Amen. And we also see where people are getting uh, good into the faith. They, they get on fire for God for a little while. And then what happens? They walk away from the faith. I'm praying and believing and trusting that in this season, God is going to bring a permanent bond, like we're talking about welding, marriage, allowing Christ to be our spiritual husband, our father who is in heaven, Lord over our life, to be submitted to him. So that when we are submitted to him, we know, like I just said right now, no matter what we go through, we have a feeling and a connection with him that is what I would call inextricable, right? A permanent connection. Amen. But it's not just a permanent connection. This term marriage would also suggest intimacy. Intimacy is a closeness, right? When daddy uh, in heaven is, and we're close to him, when we are uh, worshiping and praising and extolling an invisible God, this is the intimacy of that relationship that blesses the marriage of, between us and Christ. This is the union that blesses us because when Christ is head over everything, we do everything in, in, in following Him through the scriptures, how we obey His word through uh, our, our family situation. Right, Trevor? And in all this, we have our spiritual husband connected to us intimately. Amen. Jesus says there's going to be many, listen, brothers and sisters, many on that day, on that day of great judgment. On that day when, when we are inches away of everything being fully consummated. Come on. Fully consummated meaning that there's coming a time that every soul, every, the word of God even in the book of Enoch, every one flesh and blood will be judged. Amen. Amen. But many on that day, many on that day, are going to say, Lord, Lord, did we not know you? Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Lord, did we not uh, uh, put hands on people and heal the sick? See, the intimacy that I'm getting at is, is this, this part of the truth is that when we know that we have a, 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 a relationship with our spiritual husband, Jesus Christ in heaven, we know, we are assured in our heart.
heart spiritually. Those who worship God must do so in faith, in truth, and in spirit. So as we talk about alignment, marriage, the spiritual aspect here today, we serve a God who is invisible. But many on that day, he's going to say, away from me, you evil doer. Huh. That's a sobering thought. Because you can get so busy in your work, so busy in the things that you do in the world, and your intimate relationship with our spiritual husband, Jesus Christ, can start to walk away. Amen. Can start to walk away and you think, oh, but I'm, I'm laying hands on people, I'm seeing people uh, who are sick, healed, I'm prophesying, I, the words of heaven are coming to me. Even the word of God says that many during these end times are going to be there to bamboozle you. They're, they're going to try to even take the elect and discourage them and, and have money and fame and wealth, notoriety, self-exaltation come. And all these things take you. That's why there's false prophets, there's false apostles, there's false teachers, there's false preachers. There's false everything that should be ordained and holy by the Spirit of God. Amen. So when we have this marriage with Jesus Christ, as we read here, the bride of Christ is the church. And the husband, the head over the church, is Jesus Christ. Amen. In this book of Revelation, where we get this scripture that we led into even today's uh, um, service, right? Found in the book of Revelation chapter 21. We learn even before this, in the very beginning of the book of Revelation. You can't even read the book of Revelation unless your heart is right and you're filled with the Holy Ghost. The book of Revelation is a very sacred spiritual book. It is not a literal read. If you approach it thinking, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach this like I do my textbook at school, you're going to miss the mark. But Jesus, in the very beginning, as, it, as he's introducing the testimony of Jesus Christ, the totality, right, from beginning to the end, a vision of what's to come, says, blessed are we who read the words of this book out loud. Yes, all the scriptures bless you. Old Testament will tell you the heart of the Father. Before the, the new covenant ever came, but yet the prophesying of that to come. The New Testament, the blood covenant, the grace covenant. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And look at Trevor just smiling. Praise the Lord. But, but the new covenant, which was prophesied in the Old Testament to come, blesses us. Every piece of scripture from, from Matthew, right, to, to Timothy and book of Revelation. But the book of Revelation is where we start to really hear Jesus say, those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit says. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, when we have ears inclined to the Spirit, we know that we are the true disciple of Jesus Christ because there are true disciples of Jesus Christ and then there are false disciples of Jesus Christ. And it does not, here, here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the shout. It does not matter, and you've heard me say this before, how much you say Jesus in your heart. In fact, I was just talking to an apostle this week. God showed him in my vision, in my head, and said, get confirmation through him. He didn't say, maybe you'll get confirmation. He said, get confirmation through him. And I said, brother, uh, this is something that has been stirring my heart, but uh, I want to get your confirmation as late in my spirit. And I explained to him, what's the danger? What is the danger of a man or woman preaching the truth? What's the danger of a man or woman preaching the truth, but preaching the
the truth with an arrogant heart. And he says, arrogance comes before the fall. Amen. That's in the book of Proverbs. See, proper alignment, even as ministers, many of you are ministers in your family. Proper alignment is saying, Christ is head over all. He's my spiritual husband because I'm attached to the church. And the church loves people unconditionally like Jesus Christ came to save the world. What happens? The world then becomes part of the church because he takes screwed up people like myself and screwed up people like you. And he comes into this sanctuary and we get to hear messages of word, but when everything is properly aligned from the minister to the pew, it translates with good movement, love, and motion out there in a hurting and dark world. Amen. It brings alignment. Amen. But this alignment blesses us, not just spiritually in our, in our church settings, but in our homes, at work. It blesses us, but when we understand the spiritual nature of God, Right? Book of Revelation. It is a spiritual read. The whole, the whole book is, is spiritual. The whole book is spiritual because in the book of Hebrews it says it's alive, it is active, and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. So the whole word is spiritual. The whole word became flesh. The whole word came and humbled himself to come to the earth to save us. The word is spiritual. So when we understand spiritually the marriage, the permanent bonding and the intimacy of Christ, you know for yourself, it don't matter what devil, what false teacher, what you, when, when you're right with God, His Holy Spirit will intervene for you. <laughs> somebody will try to bamboozle you. Somebody will try to tell you something that's so off the wall. And you know it's out of character. And in your own heart, the Holy Spirit will say, just keep your mouth shut. You know for yourself that that is wrong. You don't have to argue everything, right? I know that was a big learning lesson for me, especially as I started getting into the Word. I wanted to argue everything because I just came from a prideful person. Prideful. Arrogant. But God, would, <laughs> even as I would get into my Word arrogantly like some of these arrogant preachers out there, Right? Telling people are going to be going to hell when that's not even our job, right? But I was once kind of like that too. Arrogant, getting into my word, but it, it began to cut me. <laughs> the sword of the spirit would just start to go into my heart. So you need to clean yourself up. And this and that and this and that would start to convict me. And I would begin to repent in the presence of the Lord in my own living room. If I didn't care if my children saw me. The conviction sometimes would fall so greatly that I had to get on my knees right then and there. But see, this is the attitude that God gives us when we align ourselves with Him spiritually. Many people say, how can I, how can I worship an invisible God? Right? How can I worship an invisible God? And many people even preach, many people even deceive many out there. Right, we, we, we learn about even the, the, the person who deceived, you know, over 900 people to go out to a crazy place out in, I don't know, Central America or something like that in the 70s. And over 900 people, mass suicide. But he convinced them that he was the only one that had inter proper interpretation of the Bible. He feared people to believe in the word as the word was intended. And Jesus says there's coming a day and he was telling his disciples. And when you and I become the true disciples of Jesus Christ, we rest assured that the truth of God is this, that there's coming a day. Amen. There's coming a day when I go to be with the Father, my Holy Spirit will be your teacher. My Holy Spirit will be your reminder. How many times, those of you, you don't have to raise your hand, but just think about this. How many times were you in the middle of something and it was a very important thing and you know you had your right, uh, right with God even at this time, right? 
Maybe it was something really recent. And you forgot what it is that you needed and you had enough wisdom to say, Lord, can you bring that back? I've been humiliated myself in my own flesh behind the pulpit and I've had to wait till God gave me my memory back. But even though I may not be able to talk and remember everything, or maybe I'm stuttering like Moses sometimes when I'm called, but I have enough sense and wisdom that God has imparted in my heart to say, I'm not going to go any further than this right here, Lord. I'm waiting on your promise. I'm waiting that your Holy Spirit remind me because this was a very important thing and now the enemy is trying to take this. My, my son can, can attest to this too, that even in prayer, the enemy will try to take your thoughts. While you're blessing people with prayer, people who are sick. But when we rest on Christ, our spiritual uh, you know, guide and our spiritual husband, he will bring, if you're there, and you, it doesn't matter how, you, how silly you look to other people. But if you're willing to stand there in humility, he will bring that back to remembrance. So how do we, how, how do we, you know, serve and believe in an invisible God? It is only that which pleases God that we achieve this. We achieve it through faith. We achieve it by believing that which is unseen. But you and I carry a testimony as the church, as the bride of Christ. That yeah, I, and, and I know many people, I was going through the 12 step of recovery and even though it's a great program, it wasn't until Christ, it wasn't until I started to mix Christ in my prayer that that then began to work for me. God took my drug addiction, he took my alcohol addiction, and it just shattered. So when there was nothing else, it wasn't your power, and when your testimony gives relevance to the invisible Christ working in your life, and you give him the glory for it, glory. When you give him the glory for it, your testimony is so powerful to even the unbeliever because even the word of God says that you and I, each and every one of us in here, God given us all a portion of faith, but it's your job, my job, that as Christ is the head of the church, as he is our husband, that we develop upon that faith. That's it is the faith that comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God in our ears, into our heart. And as it begins to produce conviction, as it produces influence to change certain behaviors. Remember I told you, I was prideful when I first went into the Bible. I was arrogant. <laughs> Like Nebuchadnezzar, he, he, he had to shatter me. He had to shatter all the things that I idolized, but he loved me enough not just to go all in when I first heard of the good news, right? He, he loved me enough to just give me a little bit at a time that, that I could stomach it. As I could stomach the milk, it took later as my faith grew that I was able to ingest the meat. Now I can have conversations with theologians. I can have conversations with apostles. I can talk about all matter of revelation and mysteries that God has unlocked. Not even pointing to a school that taught me that. But the Holy Spirit. So what was he doing? The word of God says glory to glory. Faith to faith. Strength to strength. Not the other way around. And in all matter of this, you increase. So, so that's how so we have a proper spiritual perspective of Christ in our life. 
He said, blessed, more blessed than you disciples who've seen me right now. And I know you've heard me preach this before, but it's so true. There's coming a day when people won't see me in flesh and blood like you, but because they believe in me, more blessed will they be because they're believing in me, in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Bride of Christ. This intimate connection. A free gift of God. Yet, it's so easy to just turn away from that relationship. Oh, he touched me, I got what I needed. He touched me, I, I got a good job. I, I, he touched me, I married the woman that I had my eyes on for the last 20 years. He touched me and now I'm walking away from Jesus. We see it a lot. But, but when the marriage is a permanent bond, when, when, when you finally get to that place where your faith has been built upon his word and his word says that he is the rock, He's not just the rock of ages. Jesus Christ was not just the rock at Meribah when Moses struck the rock and the water came out to, to, to provide water for the stubborn Israelites who were just rescued out of Egypt. But make no mistake, that was Jesus Christ, the rock, the symbolic of God right there in the middle of that story. So he, yes, he is the rock of ages. But he's the rock of our salvation now. Revelations reminds us he was the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. He was always there, but now made fully manifest when he came to die for us, then rose on the third day to shed and share with us, not just his grace blood, but his new covenant. The word of God, even in the Old Testament, was saying that when this new covenant comes out, oh, Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. But when this new covenant comes out, <laughs> it won't be written law that you have to refer to, to to remember all the many things. If you remember the Mosaic laws that were written from Torah, right? If you and I had to remember all of that just to be within the boundaries of the law, we would fall short. Every kind of offering that you can think about, a wave offering, a grain offering, a first fruits offering, all kinds of different things. Now the law, ain't, but, but the Old Testament said when this new covenant comes out, Christ is going to write it on your Think of that. Christ, through your invisible relationship with the Holy Spirit, who was made manifest to us, the generator of the Holy Spirit now is Jesus Christ. You believe in the Christ? You confess your sins to the Christ? You have access by His blood grace covenant to receive the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit becomes that which we devote our relationship to invisibly. It's the one that when we shut our prayer closet door and we get on our knees and we pray to an invisible God that no statue, no figure, no image would be worshipped but the one and only true living God who is invisible. This love covenant would be written on our heart when we had the proper perspective of who our spiritual daddy is, who our spiritual husband is, the head of the church, Jesus Christ. What God just brought back to my memory, and I think some of you have heard this testimony, it's not even that long ago with this testimony. It has to do with the new covenant. I was, uh, at the time, had a disciple that had just, I had just baptized under a tent meeting. And, and he was getting on fire for God. We had a, we had a, a dedication to God. I mean, all, all in the Spirit, downloaded under the tent by the Holy Spirit as he would begin to release 
things that he wanted to do upon these indigenous lands. You go to that riverbed and you dedicate it to me in spirit. That day, we had a sign from heaven come. My disciple, as we were doing a dedication at the bottom of a riverbed, clouds would come and the hand of Christ with the scroll, but the scroll, make no mistake, he spoke into my spirit. If you could imagine, from heaven, the clouds, and just for a second, it was only there for a moment. Even Andrea had spoke of, I see the eye, and she was talking about how she felt in the spirit that day. That God sees everything. So while we're seeing a sign over here, she's seeing a sign over there. And the sign we saw, was Jesus in his robe, white robe coming down like this with a scroll. Next to it was a fish, a fish. Well, Brother Kevin, you're gonna have to explain that to me. Yeah, even in the physical, I wouldn't have been able to explain that. But God gave me the interpretation of this sign. Jesus says, it's coming a day, Peter, when, I, when I'm gonna call you to be a fisherman, not just a fish to feed your families and to make money to provide for your family because that was his industry then. But I'm going to make you a fisherman of men. So, what was it? The new covenant, in essence, was going to be the spiritual bait, the good news. When people hear the good news mixed with your testimony, that good news is going to inspire them. And you're going to add to the kingdom of God through his word and through your testimony, mixed with the blood of Jesus, this is how we overcome darkness, the book, of, uh, the book of Revelation says. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. It's how we overcome darkness. Not that darkness won't be in, in the valley, right? It's going to be there. You're going to stare in the face sometimes, but when God is your spiritual husband, you will fear no evil. So this hand of Christ with a scroll, this sign from heaven, through the clouds, another group seeing a different sign, a different message, but to us and my disciple. And he says, brother, <laughs> my hair is standing up. I said, mine too. <laughs> I feel his glory. But he spoke into my spirit. The new covenant is confirmed. And here's a mystery that he un unleashed. The word of God says that many mysteries you will learn of. And the Holy Spirit will unlock that mystery because he'll know that you will do good by it. You'll be responsible with it. You will use it to edify people and not have people line up and say, oh, I got a great revelation. Pay me. Uh -uh. Jesus gives Freely. He says, I don't give like the world. I give freely. So when God unlocks things, it's for us to edify and build up his bride, the church. Here's the mystery. Indigenous peoples. How? is still a mystery. But indigenous peoples have the new covenant written on their hearts. And it's no wonder that why we can even go online today and Google native proverbs. And it is riddled with simple proverbs, short stories that parallel with the word of God. You know, we, we like to use big words, right? When we're prideful, we like to use the word like synonymous. It just means that this word means the same thing as this word. But even though the native Proverbs are written differently, it has a little different tone to it, uses different words and maybe some of the words of the Bible. But spiritually, when the Holy Spirit is your teacher, he shows you that it's the same thing. The truth by this elder could be from the 1700s, 1800s, still used today to inspire people. That's what the benefit of having proper order 
You could be so arrogant preaching the truth, and yet the pr uh, uh, prideful heart comes before the fall. And it ain't our, it ain't our, it ain't even our job to be in the background because this is very concerning, especially when you have been called to prophesy, to be apostolic in your ministry. But it's it's very hard. Not to just think, oh, I gotta try to address this. And then, no, you gotta allow God to say, be still. But while people are out there, it's not for us to want to be like clapping for their demise, their downfall. Even if they're doing wrong, even if you know that that is coming from an arrogant heart. Apostle Paul put it like this, and this really helped to heal me. Because I'm thinking, when these anointings would come by God, through fasting and through prayer, never knew that these things would happen. But when he chose to come down to heaven and put his hand on me, on this earth, and anoint me as dirty as I once was, I've had to learn to be healed by the scripture Apostle Paul says. And it is, don't worry about that arrogant heart. P many people are going to be preaching from an arrogant heart. But I rejoice knowing that what it is that they're still preaching is the truth. That healed me. But the, the point that I'm trying to make here is there's many mysteries. And when we learn the value of the Holy Spirit, our ancestors would say the Great Spirit. Same thing. Great Spirit over here. But over here, the Holy Spirit. King James Version. The Holy Ghost. Did you know whether you say Holy Ghost, the Great Spirit, or the Holy Spirit? It is the same one Spirit in operation bringing all the miracles upon this earth. Jesus says, First seek ye the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. And these things will be then added unto you. So when we've seen even visions of our ancestors praising God even out of their need in the middle of nowhere. And God speaking, cannot my church learn from this? Make no mistake. It is the value and the devotional relationship that you have with the invisible God who is our spiritual husband. You and I, <laughs> I love his smile. I haven't seen him smile in a long time. So every time he smiles, it just brings so much joy. But when we have this relationship, amen, we, we know for ourselves, we know when the word of God says, uh, be still, and let me fight your battles. There are other times that he will stir you up like Jeremiah. It was like a shut up in my bones. You had to release something. Maybe it was even correction to my children. <laughs> you know the times, right? There are times that he will put in your heart. It's now time, son. You've been waiting long enough. Maybe you've been even waiting a little too long. You now need to act. So there is a time to wait on you. And there's a time to act on what he's showing you to act on. Amen. And this, brothers and sisters, goes back to the why. How? How can you believe in an invisible God? It's the faith that develops in time. <laughs> and we, the church, need to be a little bit more compassionate. I don't want to go down a rabbit trail. But we got to be compassionate. We can't just... Lay seeds in somebody and think, oh, they're going to act and know God like I know tomorrow. No, it don't work that way. In fact, sometimes he'll even deliver you of some things. Hello, somebody. But he will still leave a thorn in your flesh. You were manic bipolar disorder? I took that away from you. You once had thoughts of suicide? I take that away from you. But that thorn that you had in your flesh since you were a child, addiction to pornography, I'm going to keep that there. You're going to suffer. Maybe some people that's just the joint. Maybe for some people that thorn is social media. You know? I, don't, don't look at my hands. I'm just figuratively speaking here. But, but to some it could be different things. But he leaves that thorn so that we don't 
ourselves become conceited. But see, if we don't know God, we don't know Jesus, we, we, we lose sight. And we hear something arrogantly preached like, oh my gosh, but this is all willpower. How do you know that it's willpower? Because the Spirit of the Lord will tell you, you see the arrogance where that comes from? That's willpower. That ain't going to save you. That is not going to deliver you. Your struggle in the painful situation, when you give that weakness to me, is where your deliverance is going to come from. But why do we keep this storm? Why do I have to battle with these wicked thoughts? And yes, I have learned, even myself, and I hope you have to, to repent even of your thoughts. Because Jesus says, even if you commit a thing in your mind, you fantasized about it, you committed it already in your heart. That needs repentance. <laughs> that repentance will, 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 will help you not to fully carry out the sin. Many times. This, 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 brothers and sisters, is the knowledge and through the devotion of Holy Spirit as the husband over your life. When you walk out of these doors today in the name of Jesus Christ, you will understand his bride. And it will bless even our physical marriages, y'all, in the name of Jesus. It will bless our physical marriages. Everything first happens in spiritual before it manifests in the physical. The more that we are concerned with the spiritual realm, even like our ancestors, hello somebody. The more that we are, as we live out our mortal lives as human beings, fallible, yes, but with the Lord's help, when we learn to value the things of the unseen, more the things than we do in the seen, our relationship with the Father, with His Son who was a perfect example for us, and His Holy Spirit, this union of three characters, all in one God, not two gods, not three gods, one God, the Word of God is very clear on this. There is only one God and none stand beside me. There is none above me. He stands as creator of the heavens and the earth. One God represented the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So today as we close out on this, as we have nurtured our spirit, Allow the word of God to come in and take root. I want to blow your mind spiritually. That was a little different talk. That's how my heart feels right now. I want us to be woed by God. I want us to be woed by God. I mean that, thank you, Holy Spirit. I mean that with all my heart. As we close out here today, everything written in the very last book of scriptures, there's no other greater revelation. Yes, we can, we can have mysteries unlocked, but it edifies what God already knows. And it is to be an edification for you and me in the church. You and I, brothers and sisters, represent the bride of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, I want to woe us in the Spirit. I want to take us back to everything that we talked here today, that before common scriptures were ever written, what Jesus spoke of to the angel, to the apostle John in the book of Revelation, was already made known thousands of years before Moses even started writing the book of Genesis. Same words, thousands of years before Moses came to the scene. It was during the time before the deluge. This now has been written physically by a scribe, many scribes, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, post the deluge. Post that. So before that was the books of Enoch that even in the New Testament point to the very first chapter of Enoch. 
talking about the Lord will come with ten thousands upon ten thousands to what? Bring complete judgment. It wasn't even speaking of the deluge that had not even happened yet, even though he prophesied that too. But it was the final total, what they call the white throne judgment. That's just words that people use to, to, to speak of the total consummation that one day will come. But here, found in the first book of Enoch, everything that we read in the book of Revelation foretold thousands of years before the writing of what you and I now refer to as the common Bible, the Old Testament with the New Testament. Let us read the word of God here today. This is the first book of Enoch, chapter 45, and the title of this is very telling. The lot of the apostates, and that means those who are condemned, the new heaven and the new earth. Throughout scriptures, we hear about a new heaven and a new earth, even referred to as the new Jerusalem, even as in the book of Revelation. Synonymous scriptures that when you have the Spirit teaching you, you see the parallel, you see the interconnection. And the word of the Lord reads here, and this is the second parable concerning those who deny the name of the dwelling of the Holy Ones in the Lord of Spirits. Ooh, Lord of Spirits. Now we have Lord of Spirits. Great Spirit. Holy Spirit. And yet, Holy Ghost. There could be other words out there used. But this is the Holy Ghost. And into the heaven they shall not ascend, these who are uh, called apostates. And on the earth they shall not come. Such shall be the lot of the sinners who have denied the name of the Lord of Spirits. Real quick, don't, don't let this discourage you. Because grace came, okay? I know this is very harsh. This was even before the law came. Hello, somebody. When you're as dirty as me, <laughs> it ain't a matter of if, but when you fall short to the glory, I got to do the same thing and say, Lord, please forgive me. I did it again. Okay? So, so be encouraged. That's our lot now. That when we have the grace covenant now with us, this is when you completely deny the Christ arrogantly. And you have that portion of faith that I was talking about earlier. And, and you know that something had to be able to create all this stuff. It had to have a beginning, and yet you can't explain it, not even through science. Hello? You can get, you can, you can get somewhere with science, <laughs> but even science has an origin. I'll preach on that another time. But I want us to be encouraged. For you and me, we got the blood of Jesus. Look to your neighbor and say, we got the blood. We got the blood. His blood forgives us. He said to his disciples, it don't matter how many times you sin against a brother or sister. <laughs> I, I don't care if it's seven times, 70 times. That's a lot of times in one day. If they come to you and say, uh, will you please forgive me? You got to forgive them. Because if you don't learn to do that, you can't expect heaven for yourself. Even though it's a free gift, it ain't a free for all. You have to maintain his truth as best that you can. And when you fall short, you got to repent. <clears throat> Who are thus preserved for the day of suffering and tribulation? On that day, my elect one, <laughs> my elect one, and this is talking for a time to come, now we're talking about the Son of God, the elect one. Sit on the throne of glory, and the word of God that even speaks of, Jesus will reign on King David's throne. How is he the firstborn of the dead? It's because God in heaven took the seed of David, who is already dead and laying in the ground, and took his DNA and put it into Virgin Mary. And comes Jesus through the canal of virgin and pure blood. Huh. Amen. 
and shall try their works, and their places of rest shall be innumerable. I don't want to know about that place. And their soul shall grow strong within them when they see my elect ones. Book of Revelation talks about those who come from great tribulation. Brothers and sisters, that's you and me. We come from great tribulation. By the time we get to heaven, we went through much hell. Hello, somebody. We went through much hell. So when it talks about in the book of Revelation, the multitudes in white robes, it's this elect ones with an S, plural, that he's talking about. We have an elect one, our husband in, in, in glory, and the elect ones that will be raptured up on the day of, of rapture, when the dead in Christ or the dead in life with the, those living upon the earth at that time, when he comes to meet in the heavenly realm in the sky for, and he's going to come for his bride, the church, that day he's going to bring up the elect ones, those who are in the Lamb's book of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We will be part of that. And their soul shall grow strong within them when they see mine elect ones and those who have called upon my glorious name. Then will I cause my elect one to dwell among them. There's coming a day that when we go up into the heavenlies, we won't have pain and suffering no more. And every tear would have already been wiped from our eyes. The sorrow that we felt from our elect one and spiritual husband, Jesus Christ, the word of God says. That's what it's talking about here. Amen. And I will transform the heaven and make it an eternal blessing and light. And I will transform the earth and make it a blessing. New heaven, new earth, a new Jerusalem. And I will transform the earth and make it a blessing. And I will cause my elect ones to dwell upon it. But the sinners and evildoers shall not set foot thereon. For I have provided and satisfied with peace my righteous ones and have caused them to dwell before me. The multitudes in white robes along with all the angelic hosts in heaven, will be praising and extolling and lifting up the name of the king. Glory, glory is our king. And have caused them to dwell before me, but for the sinners there is judgment impeding with me, so that I shall destroy them from the face of the earth. I don't even want to talk about that. But this is speaking of the new heaven and the new earth, even spoken of in the book of Revelation when we led into today's uh, sanctuary gathering. <laughs> the new heaven and the new earth, the new Jerusalem, all synonymous. Those all mean the same things. But Jesus is our husband. We the people, as we live through much hell on this earth, we represent his bride. We the people are the church. We the people are his bride. Amen. This, my brothers and sisters, is the spiritual, spiritual marriage God wanted to drive into our hearts today so that everything can be aligned perfectly. We may not be perfect. I saw a post today on Facebook, bless my heart. We're not perfect. He don't expect us to be perfect. His word even says we have sin nature in us before we were even uh, come through the canal of the womb. Sin nature is a curse. <laughs> Goes back to Adam and Eve. But he don't let that prevent us from having it. We, even the word of God, even in the book of Enoch, all the evil spirits that we contend with, they're able to, to work their evil out there, influence us, once influenced me. I once was part of the dark kingdom, y'all. Okay? I once, I, so I, when I see an evil person, I recognize with that, because I once did that bidding for that kingdom. I once did, knowing me. But he still loved me to clean me up. 
But regardless, you and I get to feel the preciousness of His glory now. The many miracles, many people in this room have seen many miracles even over the last couple of years. Right? We have the glory of God now as a, as a permanent witness. And, and see that, that, that word permanent symbolizes even marriage, right? Because now that we are permanently connected to the Christ, we are now his hires for the kingdom. He is our king of kings. He is our Lord of lords. He is our bright morning star. He, he's our battle axe. He's that person that like Elisha had to just be still and let God work out some things. He represents these things. He's our savior. He's our guide. He's our GPS. Amen. So we get to walk out here today knowing spiritually what marriage spiritually represents and who we are as his bride, the church. Amen. <clears throat> Turn with me now as we close out here today. We'll make home. <clears throat> Ran over a little bit. Sorry about that. <laughs> Book of Romans. Turn with if you got your Bible apps or whatever you feel led by the Holy Spirit to get into your word. Turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter 8. Book of Romans, chapter 8. We're going to read from verses 35 through 39. Mm. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Think about that. Who shall separate us from the love? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, nakedness, danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. In the midst of that, by the way. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Look to your neighbor and say, we're more than conquerors. Come on. We're more than conquerors. you got to believe that. We're more than conquerors. Through Christ who strengthens us. For I am convinced that neither death, listen, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, or demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ our Lord. spiritually with Christ and when we have him it don't matter what kind of hell we face because in spite of all of that we know in our heart he's going to get us through it <laughs> even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death I'm convinced fully convinced I will fear no evil because we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. Stand to your feet, please. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's get back. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. It truly is a lamp unto our feet. Lord, we may have been a little weak this past week. But you renewed our spirit. You renewed our joy. You renewed our strength. Those of us who learn to wait on you, Lord, we are renewed in strength. We thank you for your promise. Lord, we thank you that to, today, as we got into your word about the spiritual aspect of marriage, the permanent bond and relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our spiritual husband, 
We, the people, the church, are his bride. Lord, thank you for encouraging us here today. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, every relationship represented here today be blessed with the alignment of your truth made known by your Holy Spirit. Lord, bring a supernatural touch and alignment in our families jointly. And let us be the light of you, Christ Jesus, that help bring alignment to others who may be a little fearful, oh God, to even get to know you. And help us in this hour that as we get to see the implicit to explicit, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, we will witness to others, oh God, your goodness and encourage them. And they themselves will feel your invisible touch like I've felt it. And many of us in this sanctuary have. Lord, here today, seal your word with love. And Lord, we are careful here today as one body of Christ, represented unto you, to give you all the praise and thanks. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. All right, thank you. It's your brother, Pastor Kevin Quelch, Rodriguez, Living on the Rock Ministries. And until next time, we love you. God bless you.